fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table.
fathers give thy Joseph and Anasim, giving unto them Ephraim and Manasseh as the fruit of their procreation. Thou dost accept Zechariah and Elizabeth, and didst make their offspring to be the forerunner. From the root of Jesse, according to the flesh, thou didst put forth the ever virgin one, and wast incarnate of her, and born of her, for the redemption of the human race. Through thine unutterable gift and bountiful goodness, thou dost come to Cana of Galilee, and didst bless the marriage there, to make manifest that it is thy will, that there should be lawful marriage and procreation. Do thou the same, O Holy Master, accept the prayers of us thy servants, and as thou wast present there, be thou also present here with thine invisible protection, bless this marriage, and grant to these thy servants, Carl and Allison, a peaceful life, length of days, chastity, mutual love in the bond of peace, long-lived offspring, gratitude from their children, a crown of glory that does not fade away. Graciously grant that they may see their children's children, preserve their dead unassailed, give them of the dew of heaven from on high, and of the fatness of the earth, fill their houses with meat, wine, and oil, and every good thing, so that they may give a turn to those in need. Grant also to those who are present with them all those petitions which are for their salvation. For thou art the God of mercies and of bounties and of love toward that time. And we glorify thee, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Now and 
subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that the church might be presented before him in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Even so, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no man ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. This is a great mystery, and I take it to mean Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. And to your spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Protect us. 
us and preserve us from this generation forever. Oh 
Rejoice, O Isaiah. Rejoice, O Isaiah. A virgin is with child and shall bear a son, Emmanuel. He is both God and man, and Orient is his name. Magnifying him with all the virgin blood.
How did that happen? Uh, he brought you together and we ask that he will uh, bless you and remember you and uh, preserve you, that he would bless your marriage uh, for your sake, that it be something uh, wonderful for you, uh, but also that through your marriage you would become a source of blessing for others. At least three times we pray that God would uh, fill your houses with wheat, wine, and oil, and every good thing, so that you, in turn, may give to those in need. So, although the wedding, the marriage, your life together, is about you, it doesn't end there. It extends to your family, to your friends, and it's meant to be a source of good for others. Uh, how that works out in any marriage, in any family, it's uh, a delicate thing. Thing, but and something that we aspire to, to make of our own relationships a source of blessing for others. We also pray that God would grant you much joy. All those remember, O oh Lord our God, and preserve them, O oh Lord our God, and so on. In the midst of that was nestled, grant them the joy that the Empress Helen had when she discovered the precious cross. Sort of an obscure reference, but the joy is important. The joy of finding unexpected depths, delights, blessings in your life together. May God always give you those joys, moments of joy. And then finally, of course, the epistle tells us that husbands and wives, for a marriage to endure, have to respect and uh, cherish each other. That's not always easy. Not all the, oh, it is easy at first, but as the years go by, it's not always so easy to respect and cherish each other. It takes work. It takes work. It takes effort. Um, once respect is lost, and once that sense of value, which is what we mean when we say cherish, the value above all others, once that begins to uh, dissipate, it becomes really difficult. So therefore, the vision is that in your marriage, you're continually uh, renewing, reviving, reigniting that sense of respect and cherishing mutual love. May God bless and keep you. Grant, O Lord, a peaceful life, health, salvation, visitation, furtherance in all good things, every blessing out of Zion, to thy servants, Carl and Allison, you'll be crowned in marriage. Preserve and keep them, O Lord, for many years. God.
Blessed are the 